So is this a blessing or a curse? I don't know if you can even see it, but it's all information pounding this person. And, you know, older people, I think, have a little bit of a harder time with all the information overload. And the younger people, because they've had it, uh, might see it this way, right? Which is you're wearing the goggles and you're looking at all of these um, virtual reality things. And, and for the older people, it's a little tougher. So bear with me here just for a minute. This is, a, this is one way that a chart shows all the different generations that go back to 1915 and to 2015. So in 100 years, what they're identifying is six generations. All right, and, you know, these names are not final, but it's just what people call them. So baby boomers, Generation X, Millennials, Gen Z, that all means something. But uh, that's not my point is to unpack all that. It's to, it's to remind us that, yes, it's our obligation to pass on the truths, pass on the timeless truths to the next generation, but that it gets harder with every succeeding generation. Now, I'll try to explain what I mean. As we age we tend to like nostalgia versus I love to learn new things. <laughs> Go on your high school Facebook page if you have a page. I mean, I don't know how many hours they spend finding these old photos of Jan's ice cream store, the drive-in theater on Route 22 in Union. Like, get a life, man. You people, stop living in the past. It's exciting. Serve God. It's never a dull moment. Like, you're stuck on the past. It was great, but it's great today. Anyway, they didn't elect me president. <laughs> so I'm saying mentoring each next gen has become a, a bigger challenge. So just real quickly, in 1947, not far from here, the first transistor was invented in Mary Hill. So prior to 47, you couldn't bring your radio to the beach and listen to all your favorite songs. But the transistor radio blew up when they invented this thing, and now all of a sudden that brought a bunch of music to people that never would have heard it before. There were radios before that, but not portable. Oh, that's good. And then the microchip, well, first of all, it was Mary Hill at Bell Labs, and Mary Hill is where that, excuse me, where that transistor was invented. There's a lot of rich history in New Jersey of inventions and new ideas. The light bulb! Pretty good. Went all around the world. Then in 1958, so 11 years later, they then come up with a microchip. 12 years later, there's a moonwalk. IBM comes out with the PC 12 years after that. And then Netscape comes out with this browser in 13 years. So it's like pretty big increments before the next breakthrough comes. And then the iPhone came out in 2007. And Google allowed you to start searching in 2008. So if I could just be real here for a minute. How hard do you think it is for this generation who grew up with an iPhone and Google search to talk to these folks who had to go to the library and pull out 15 different books? By the time I got down the aisle, they already have the answer on Google, okay? It's not fair. But we gave them all these tools. It was part of the progress. It's great that we can have all these things. They could be used for plenty of evil. But this is part of the challenge. How hard are we trying to understand how these people will process when we're from back here? I don't think we're trying hard enough because it's really hard. They have had so much information from such a young age for so long that if you'll just sit and talk to them expecting to learn something, you will learn something. You might not like everything you're learning, but you'll learn something. And if we take that posture, the younger people are going to receive a blessing because we have a lot to give them. But nobody wants to be lectured. So that's the rest of the picture. It's like, when do you go back and just sit down with somebody or when do you invite, if you're in the older generation, when do you invite them to come and have a cup of coffee? And I want to learn about your life. I want to learn about what's important to you. What are your friends saying? What's the generation saying? Instead of, there's kids out today, teenagers, that don't want to, like, order a pizza from the pizzeria. Because they're afraid they're going to say the wrong thing on the phone. They, they got so used to texting. Nobody should be afraid to call Vinny's Pizza. They don't care if you make a mistake. Sausage, pepperoni, whatever you want, no problem. And I'm not meaning to mock this. 
Something happened in the culture that created such this paranoia of making a mistake that, that we've lost one of the biggest, most important blessings of community is talking to each other. Well, that's not from God. We've got to talk to each other. We've got to communicate the power of the church is that we're together. Forsake not the assembling together with other believers. You good? I'm going to end now. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. I'm going to go right to the last one. I'll go to this one. All right, you can stand up now so you know I'm serious. <laughs> Paul said, this is my life's work, helping people understand and respond to this message. Anybody can relate? You want to help people understand and respond to this message. That's good news. It comes as a sheer gift to me, a real surprise. God handled all the details because when it came to presenting the message to people who had no background in God's way, I was the least qualified of any of the available Christians. You get what Paul's doing? He's a humble man. He's saying they never should have picked me to go to the Gentiles. I was an expert on the Jews. But I saw to it that God had a plan. God saw to it that I was equipped. But you can be sure it had nothing to do with my natural abilities. That's a good place to be, humble. And so here I am, preaching and writing about things that are way over my head. The inexhaustible riches and generosity of Christ. We, I'm sorry. My task is to bring out in the open and make plain what God, who created all this, has been doing in secret and behind the scenes all along. So as brilliant as Paul was, he was still trying to translate all the Hebrew knowledge he had and come to grips with a new paradigm that you can only be saved by faith, not by works. We should really be grateful for Paul because he wrestled with God to get these truths down on paper. And half the time he was just dictating it as he was going. Wow, what a, what a gift he is to us. But then he says this amazing thing, that it's through this group of people, through the church, through the local church, none of us feeling fully qualified for any of this stuff. It's through the church that this extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among the angels. Like, can you believe that God used him? <laughs> me. I'm talking about me now. Nothing's impossible for God, right? This was planned by God and then executed in Christ Jesus. When we trust in him, we're free to say what needs to be said and bold to go where we need to go. That's a really good way to end because that's our identity, right? That's my identity. I'm a child of God first. Before anything else, I'm a child of God. And he's got this same plan that he told Paul Get about the Father's business and let people know there's freedom in Christ. And if you'll just sit down with young people, they're confused about a lot of stuff. And you have more wisdom than you realize, but you can expect to learn something from them too. So you're not going in as the teacher pointing the fingers and, what's wrong with you? Don't you get it? What are you, stupid? Bad idea. No, I respect you. I honor you. You're the next gen. You're going to be our future. We need you to know these timeless truths. But because we haven't worked that graph very well and we just expect them to listen to us, no, let's repent of that and say, Lord, I open up my heart and I want to be, uh, I want to be a resource to these people, young people especially, but I also want to receive what you want to say to me through them. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to just pass on these timeless truths that we could translate into the currency of the current kingdom, that into the language and, and translate it with fluency into a way that people would understand it, especially the younger people who might feel neglected or who feel so disconnected from what was normal to us is so different for them today. We ask you to download strategy to us as the adults and, and those that might have the, the advantage of the wisdom of our age and experience, but to also translate it to them in a way that they can speak into our hearts and into our lives so this timeless truth gets transferred into this time-bound world that we're living in. Could you say it with me? Use me to, to advance your kingdom to every next generation that has come up behind me in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen.